Good morning. Today we shall be having the 15th lecture of this series. And in this lecture, we shall be discussing about some problems. So that means whatever you learned so far, how to apply those ideas to specific problems will be discussed in the next few minutes. Okay. Now let us have a look at this problem. Some of them are relatively straightforward, simple, but slowly you will find some of them are not that simple. This is one of the simplest ones where there is a nozzle. The nozzle is not circular, rather it is a two inclined plane plates. So that, why is it so? Because if it is flat plates, the area will be changing in a linear fashion. But if it is a circular one, obviously it will be square of the radius. So, area will not be changing in a linear fashion. So that is why to make it simple, we are imagining that these two plates are flat plates, normal to the board, very long. You do not have to worry about it. And it is also given that the velocity goes on increasing in a linear fashion. Only to meet that requirement, you need to have straight edges. Otherwise, you will not get a linear variation in the velocity. Remember, mass flow is the same. Whatever flows in, goes out in a steady state flow. But velocity depends on the cross-sectional area. If the cross-sectional area is varying linearly, as in this case, velocity also will go on increasing in a linear fashion. That is why I put this, you know, saying that converging channel, linear variation is given. So, your aim is to find the location of the particle we call x p, subscript p, meaning nothing else but the location of the particle x, taking this as the origin as a function of time. Okay, that is the problem. So, how do you start? Before I give you the solution, you should first think, then I will give you the solution. I can always write velocity at any location as a function of x with the given here, we will call it as V1 and in terms of this is section 1, we will call that as okay, section 1. So, at section 1, if the velocity is V1, I will be able to write what will be the velocity at any distance x in this form. Okay. What is that form? This is the form, but let me let me give it step by step. Okay. So you are able to write u as a linear function of x. Here you have to be careful. When x equal to zero, velocity equal to v1. When x equal to l, end of the nozzle, so it becomes twice. This is the assumption. The velocity is increasing linearly to twice the value. If it is thrice, obviously here you have to put a two. That doesn't matter. Now, now that I have u as a function of x, how would I find out x as a function of time? You know, express velocity u dx by dt. So that's why. You express dx by dt, all right? U into v1 into 1 plus x by l, and subsequently you are trying to connect x and t. So rearrange this, okay? And when x is zero, we call that time starting time is zero. 
at any time t, the location is x. And uh, this is a simple integration, all right? Very simple integration. And finally, you rearrange this and try to express x as a function of time. Is it okay? This is straightforward. That is why I said one of the simplest one where the velocity is given as a function of x and you have to get the value of x as a function of time. So, that is not difficult. Is it okay? Fine. Now, let us see what happens to example 2. Now, the example 2 is also very familiar to you because a similar problem had appeared in your class test. Only the functions were different. U was different, V was much simpler, but the principle is alike. You know U component, V component, what is the equation of a streamline? dy by dx equal to v by u. So, whatever is given, rearrange. And again, the integration is relatively simple. Okay, there may be some error in some step, but overall you see the methodology. Only here, because all this, always all these can be absorbed in the constant c. You do not have to really worry about the exact number. And this is log plus log, means log of this into this is log of some c, you do not know what it is. Or finally, you can also, although I use the same notation c, it is different in different equations. And finally, this equal to c, you simplify this and get it. This is a general expression. But if somebody says find out the equation of streamline passing through some specific point whose coordinates are given, the c can be evaluated by substituting x and y. If it passes through some other point, you have to substitute the new value of x and y. But this is a general expression. That is why I said by assigning different values to the constant on the right side of the above expression a family of streamlines can be generated. Well, it does not matter because no, no, you do not worry about the sign of this at the moment since we are keeping it general. See, ultimately everything will be taken care through C, where it passes. So, what we are trying to do is to keep it general. We do not worry about whether it is positive or negative, not to worry. It can be anything. As long as it is a general function of x and y, this is how we express. Okay? So, put it simple, because if you go to rigor math, whether it is a negative modulus should come or not, then it is goes out of control. Okay? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. See, they don't here. You you put it here. No, no, no. This is general solution. Finally, you don't go back to that with this value. This is log of this plus this equal to this. In that case, every integration of log will fail. Any any equation you talk about will fail because you'll find a value which will make it negative. Then you say everything crashes. Huh? No, no. You can all right. That's all right. But do not worry about that. What will happen if I put x 7 fourth here, it becomes 0 infinity. Analysis is fine, but here you are deriving a general expression in terms of x and y and later on you will get the profile. This is also a solution. What you will end up is a singularity, infinite, 0, all kinds of these are the singularities. We are not talking about singularities. Okay? Fine. If you have interest in mathematics, you can make it more rigorous and give condition modulus and so on. That is not it. Now, this is little more thought provoking, where the velocities are given, the u component and v component. Okay? And you have been asked to find the line integral of the velocity vector 
along A, B, C, D, A. That is the circulation, line integral in a closed curve is a circulation, fine. So, how would I proceed? How would I proceed? The equations are given to you. So, go from the basics. You do not have to worry what to do next and so on. Go by the basics. Okay. Before I go to the basic, I also have some check which is not asked for, but out of my curiosity, see from that given velocity capital V components of two velocities are here. Okay. Now, I am only showing first, I want to find first is it a rotational flow or not. So, here I write the term for rotation about the z axis. This is being a planar flow in the x y plane. Rotation is taking place about the z axis. That is why I am writing omega z. There is only one component. Only if the flow is three dimensional, then the rotations can take place about three different axes. Okay. All right. This is only a on the sideline. It has not been asked for. Next comes how to find those line integrals. So all that you need to write is without worrying about what is going to happen. I am going from A to B. That means along the x-axis. That will be u into dx. That means you are integrating with respect to x. And what is the range of variation? When I say A to B, that will be reflected in the next equation. All that you do is substitute for u, okay, dx. x is varying in the range of 0 to 1. When I am going in the vertical from B to C, what component of velocity is in picture? V. And integrating with respect to y, dy. Again, range B to C is 0 to 1. When you come here, write down the same thing, u dx. But when you go from C to D, same u, x varies lower limit starting from 1 on the right hand side, you are going in the reverse. That is why it is not 0 to 1, 1 to 0. And same function here, again y also in the reverse, 1 to 0. This will take care of everything. Only be careful about putting the limits properly. And having got this, this part becomes 0 when you put the limits. What is the reason? Because y is 0 throughout. So that is why irrespective of what you get, the integral, y is 0, this becomes 0. But here, write down these values and on substitution, you are going to get an answer like minus 2 meter square per second. Again, remember that the circulation, units of circulation, it is a velocity multiplied by distance. That is what you are summing up. Velocity is meter per second, distance is meter. That is why always the answer, you should give the units. Do not forget to give the units. It is always meter square per second. Is it okay? All right. Now, while discussing the stream functions, I had not really given you the proof that psi 2 minus psi 1 gives you the discharge between these two. This is a streamline. Psi 1 is a streamline. All that it means psi 1 is psi is equal to a constant C 1. In short notation, we are writing as psi 1. This also means psi equal to some constant C 2, which is psi 2. And the property of the psi line, which is a very important property, is psi 2 minus psi 1 will give you the flow between these two streamlines. I had mentioned that and you were using it, but I had not given you the proof. Now, if you go to the internet and find out many proofs, some of them are fairly rigorous mathematically. Okay? But I picked up one that is appealing, it is simple and that is good enough. Okay? So, that is why this drawing is important. Look at, look at these 
coordinates. This is starting is x1, y1. I go from here, so x1 is fixed, only y changes to y2. From there, I go horizontally, so y2 is fixed, changes to some other x2. And what will be the flow through this is the point A, okay? this here a little away, but this is that point A. So from A to B, along that line, and remember normal to the paper, it is 1. Okay? So what will be the flow through A, B, area multiplied by velocity normal to it? What is the area, this distance okay, into 1? I do not write 1 multiply the velocity normal to that. What is the velocity component normal to A, B? U. U is the velocity normal to that, right? And there is no component discharge due to this component. When I talk about this, what is the flow across this? Again, area will be this length into this one. And the velocity normal to that, the velocity normal to that is your V component. So, keeping that in mind, right? just have this carefully in your mind, we are going to write flow rate across A B equal to U D Y, which I explained to you. And what is the variation with respect to Y? Y is here, right? So, Y varying between 1 to 2, Y 1 to Y 2. And what is U? d psi by dy, dy. And what does this quantity represent? That represents the total change in d psi. Always total change in d psi. Psi is a function of x and y. Total change in d psi will be equal to partial change due to y plus partial change due to x. But in this case, what happens to that partial change due to x? zero because there is no change in x. So, in a sense, this also represents the total change in psi, d psi. And when you change the variables, y1. So, y1 means what happens, what happens to the corresponding psi, psi1. And through y2, psi2. So, here you are writing d psi psi 1 to psi 2, which is psi 2 minus psi 1. Next comes same exercise, but along this line d c. Right? Remember now, x will change, y will remain fixed. So, flow rate across b c equal to v into that d x, x changing from x 1 to x 2, which is x 1 to x 2. And what is V minus d psi by dx, dx. And in some sense, this represents the total change in psi, d psi, negative. Again, through x1, through x1, okay. what is that passing through x1? We are now here in this. Through x1, what is passing is psi 2 and through other one, through x2. The one that passing is psi 1, or this is you can change negative, I have you, you get it here. So, what does this show? That no matter where the two points lie on the two psi lines, the discharge between the two streamlines will always be the same. So, the same thing is drawn here. If I start from a point D, whether I connect it straight like this or connect to point F, it does not really matter. Any two points you take, the discharge across that line joining any two points will always be equal to psi 2 minus psi 1. It's okay. So, if somebody says, gives you the psi function and says find the discharge between two points A and B whose coordinates are given. Let us say 1 comma 1 and maybe 3 comma 2. So, what you can do is there is a line joining the two in the flow domain. 
your interest is to find the discharge across that line. So, what is the simple way of getting it? Find the value of psi passing through this point, find the value of or what is the value of psi passing through the second point, this psi minus this psi will give that. So, it is a very simple matter, but often people make it very complicated taking component and integral. all that is ready made to you. See always even when I look at your answer script, many of you are trying to go back and do it from basics and so in that process quite likely you will not come to the correct end. You must know how to make use of the end products which is based on many of these theories that we are discussing. So, if two points are given find psi 2 psi 1 that gives irrespective of how you connect with a straight line or curved line it does not make a difference. Okay. Now, let us go to one more example all right. Okay. Here, here you have been asked flow is given u does not change with x or y v changes with x is a incompressible fluid possible, then can a potential function exist. So, what do we do? What is your suggestion? What should I do? Now, whether you have been asked to find whether a flow exists or not, it is always a good practice to have check whether flow exists or not. Okay. So, what is the check that flow can exist? What is the check that functions given functions which are given to you for u and v with that flow can exist? What is the you know check? Because that check is why is it necessary? whether out of intention or not, I may give two functions u and v and x and y are appearing in both and then ask you find out the potential, find out this, find out that. Okay. So, blindly you may start doing whatever you know, you use those equations, you will get some answer which finally may not be having any meaning at all. Why? Because in the very first step you never checked whether the given functions are possible flow or not. It is not simply mathematical exercise. You cannot say I you know I know the integration I did it did that. Finally, who knows in the first step supposing you come to the conclusion that flow is not possible then all that you have done has no meaning. So, always whether it is asked for or not a good practice is to have a check, just a simple check. What is that check? Hmm? Now, what is that flow minimum, minimum condition continuity equation. So, you have to check with these given ones for an incompressible fluid continuity equation is du by dx plus dv by dy whether it is 0 or not. In case it is not, if you write with the given functions flow is not possible, you get full credit for that question. But if it does not exist, you go on doing, you still get 0 after spending 15, 20 minutes doing all that calculation means nothing. We follow that make that is why I said it is always good. It is very simple. Always check d u by d x plus d v by d y whether that is equal to 0 or not. Okay. So, here as you see d u by d x is 0, d v by d y partial derivative of this with respect to y is 0. So, it is a feasible case. Next comes here, can a potential function exist? Again here you need to check 
whether the given velocities are lead to finite rotation or not. If rotation is 0, then only phi function can exist. For some reason, if phi or sorry, the rotation is not 0, in that case you say that it is a rotational flow and no phi function can exist. So, go very systematically. That is why here you see first represents incompressible fluid flow. Second part find omega z comes out to a finite quantity not 0, rotational hence no potential function can exist. Okay. Here you have been given the clue can a potential function exist that is why you are doing. Supposing I block it and say find a potential function for this given flow field. So, blindly you might start doing might start doing u is this which is equal to minus d phi by dx, v equal to this which is equal to minus d phi by dy, do integration after all mathematical integration you gone doing finally, you will be able to get some function. But since you have not checked this small bit again what all you do is meaningless to follow. So, go very systematically whether flow can exist, whether flow is rotational or irrotational, then you proceed. It does not take much time, hardly fraction of a minute you can do. That is your continuity equation we derived. Remember the continuity equation in three dimensions we have. It was a plane one, then there is no derivative with respect to z. This is the continuity equation d by dx for incompressible fluid. In fact, one of the most powerful, simple yet most powerful equations, conservation of mass. We have done the derivation earlier just please have a look at it okay we have done that and this is always it will come throughout your fluid mechanics continuity now let's have a look at some other example and here again what are the things that you need to do which are the following functions could represent a velocity potential for a two dimensional flow of an ideal fluid all right that means f x oh, sorry f x y function of x y equal to x plus 5 y in this case f x y we express this simply here. So, what is the check here if it is represents a potential function supposing it represents a potential function then what should it satisfy. what should it satisfy? When, when do you have a potential function? So, it must satisfy Laplace equation is not it. So, here Laplace equation you check whether these functions satisfy Laplace equation. If it satisfies Laplace equation then it is a potential flow possible. Okay. You may not use it, but if you want it can be used as a potential function. That is why as it is again very simple you know there are simple functions I picked up. So, that you know the principle do not worry about the complicacy of the function that is not the intention. Okay. So, here because it satisfies 0 yeah, but in the other cases not 0. All right. So, this is not a velocity potential. Similarly, this also cannot represent a velocity potential. Is it okay? Fine. Now, read this this is little more involved in calculation. All right. So, what, what, what is that you have been asked to do? Look at this psi function is given to you. First, is the flow irrotational that is relatively straightforward. What is the velocity potential of the flow if it exists meaning only if you get an answer that the flow is irrotational you will go to this next step. Now, assuming that I get it which will see the answers what else is needed 
density of the fluid is given, let us say air is close to 1.12, seems to be close to the density of air. Pressure at some point is given to you, so 4.8 kilopascals, and you have been asked to find the pressure at some other point whose coordinates are given, 9,6. So, tell me the methodology, then we will go step by step show the calculations, but have it first here. Here, a two dimensional flow described by this psi. One psi is given, either you can directly check Laplace equation. Alternately, a better way will be, because you need them later, find from psi what is u and what is v. Make use of those u v in the omega z, the rotation and then try to find whether it is a rotational or an irrotational flow. Is it okay so far? Now, supposing it comes a irrotational flow, then you will go to the next part. How do I find the velocity potential? I have given you examples earlier in my lecture. How do I find it? See, from psi, you know what is u and v. Same u and v will be now written in terms of the phi function, u equal to minus d phi by dx, v equal to minus d phi by dy, and then integrate that, get the phi function. So, up to that, you are very familiar what to do. But in the second part, what should be done? Just suggest you must tell me what should I do? How to find the difference of pressure between point 1 comma minus 2 and 9 comma 6? Tell me the, the method. Do not worry about the detail. details I will show you. Hmm? Sorry? So, first you need to find what is the velocity at 1 comma minus 2. Similarly, find the velocity at 9 comma 6. Then apply Bernoulli's principle between the two points. You know the two velocities are different, hence the pressures will automatically be different and then you calculate. So, at least the method should be clear what you should do. Okay? So, let us see how the calculation goes. From here, d psi by d y equal to minus 4 y and v equal to minus d psi by d x again from the given function and always the check continuity equation is satisfied. Hence, flow is possible. Okay? Then we do the rest. Here, you check either you find rotation in terms of u and v or you check directly Laplace equation. And if this happens, flow is irrotational. So, since if you put there, you will find this is satisfied, that is why it gets flow is irrotational. This also is a very straightforward procedure. Whatever u I had in the earlier one, so you had minus 4 y v equal to this, same quantities are being equated to d phi by d x minus. So, if I integrate this, I get phi equal to 4 x y plus a constant or a function of y. Similarly, repeat for v, again minus d phi by d y and v was equal to minus 1 plus 4 x. Here again, I get something. Okay? This part, be careful now. Therefore, the phi function finally will be equal to add the two solutions. While adding, be careful, whatever is appearing common, you have to take only once, not twice, not 8 x y. So, 4 x y plus y plus
plus a constant. This will be the answer. And ignore the constant. Normally, we do not worry because its effect is only entire pattern gets shifted. So, people as a convention do not worry about the constant phi equal to y into 1 plus 4 x. Okay. You remember you have u function v function. So, if you substitute these coordinates x and y, you will be having u and v at the respective locations. So, at point 1 comma minus 2, you can go back to those expressions, u is this much, v is this, but before you apply Bernoulli's principle, you must know the resultant velocity, not the components. Hence, resultant velocity from here, you find as 9.43 meter per second. Similarly, at other point 9 comma 6, velocity components are these, resultant is 44.1 meters per second and then you apply your Bernoulli's principle not to worry about the datum head you can write it ignoring the datum head effect we are talking about that here because we are talking in one plane so datum head does not come into picture so p1 by rho plus v1 square by 2g equal to p2 by rho plus v2 square by 2 is rearranged because I want to find what is p2 by rho equal to p1 by rho is given 4.8 kilo pascals. So, 10 to the power of 3 pascals by rho 1.12 plus v1 square by 2 minus this finally, this much or p2 will be equal to rho times this. So, many kilo newtons all right. So, p1 was given 4.8 and here it is 3.76. Now, always it is again a good practice is have always mental checks. You do not have to write it. What is the mental check? The earlier pressure was given as sorry the yeah pressure at 1 is given 4.8 kilo Pascals. So, if the velocity is higher I would expect lower pressures. So, that is why it is coming instead of 4.8, 3.76. Because for some reason, while you put your calculator instead of plus minus somewhere, you may get a number. Okay. It is a very rare chance, but it happens. So, instead of 3.76, while putting the decimal, you may even write 37.6. Later on, you cannot argue, no, only I put, see, one decimal this way that way, but how can you have 37.6? Very high pressure when the velocity is high. Velocity here is 44. Velocity there was only 9. So what I mean is, these are you have to develop that itself. But uh, somehow you people seem to be always in great hurry. Shortcuts you don't write rho in an expression, but finally while writing the answer, I don't know. Mentally you say mentally I do it. That's not right. See, many a times while writing the expression, you do not write rho, but while writing final answer, since you know rho is 1000, the answer is given multiply 1000 and you make it kill. See, that kind of a, those will not hold good. Let me be very clear. That may be all right for cracking some exams, but not here. You have to be very systematic. How do you get that number? Simply everywhere you write, pressure comes out 1.2, finally you say it is 1.2 kilo Newton. How do I get it? Where is the thousand missing throughout your calculation? Ultimately, you give that. Okay. Now, what I say is, I don't know why, in spite of the fact you have sufficient time, you seem to be always in a hurry. How to make it very short? And uh, all right. Now, still there is some time. We'll be continuing. Oh, no. X Y is the plane. Z is the other. Okay. And even if you have, let us say you have z, the density is so low, 1.12. So, what is the difference in pressure you will get due to variation in z? Very little. So, that is why you have to also make some reasonable you know, answers make your life simpler. You can have, but even if it is there, you can, the variation is very little. Always give a 
valid justification. Okay. Come here. A two-dimensional source at the origin has a strength 3 pi by 2 meter cube per second per meter. Instead of that, I could have written so many meter square per second. Okay, but to make it a little clearer, I wrote so many meter cube per second per meter. That means that is the value of Q for your source. Density of the fluid is given 800 kg per meter cube. Calculate the velocity, pressure gradient, and acceleration at this point. Okay. So, things are little more complex looking compared to the earlier problems, but as long as you follow the basics step by step, understand what each means, any problem you can tackle. Okay. All right. So, here at least let me set the first part. Given Q, you remember earlier we were using capital Q, do not mix up the two, that capital Q what I have given earlier is same as this small q. Some books use small q for unit discharge, some books use capital Q, but using small q is really desirable, so that it does not lead to confusion. Normally, capital Q is reserved for the total discharge normally, whereas small q is per unit discharge, but in the earlier slides, I have given capital Q as the unit discharge. So, keep that in mind that whatever I have used capital Q is same as this, so many meter square per second. All right. So, what will be your uh, source constant Q by 2 pi is m. We have done that while deriving psi and phi functions. So, here the numbers are given and it comes out as 3 by 4 meter square per second. For a source, we have these functions already derived. Okay. So, psi was m theta and phi was minus m log r. So, immediately you know what are these psi and sorry the yeah psi and phi functions for this given data. All right. Now, have a look next, how do I get V theta and V r, all right, you see here. This is a source, so there is only one component, the radial component of velocity. V theta is 0, that is what was the principle based on which we derived psi and phi functions. Okay. Now, what is V theta and, all right, acceleration in the radial direction. What will be the acceleration in the radial direction? See, you remember the how we wrote down the acceleration in x direction. It was a general one, right. Of course, this is in polar coordinates, but the principle if you remember what was the acceleration in x direction? du by dt plus u du by dx plus v du by dy and so on. So, local term and convective term. Same principle is also valid in any direction, but it is in polar coordinates. So, there will be a local term and a convective term. If it is a steady flow as it, this happens to be, the local term is 0. So, you will be left with only the convective terms similar to u du by dx plus v all that. In this case, you have theta as well as r to take derivatives. However, what happens to the derivative of v r in the theta direction? Radial velocity. Does it depend on theta? No, derivative radial velocity at any r is the same irrespective of where you are on that circle, right. So, radial velocity depends only on r, it does not depend on theta. So, when I write here, 
if you go to the polar coordinates, there would have been another term involving derivative of V r with respect to theta, r d theta and all that. But since it does not depend on this, it is actually symmetric flow, that is why you are only left out, out of those combinations, only one part. So, this is what the acceleration in the radial direction is equal to V r d V r by d r, that is the convective part. Local part is 0. The summation of this plus the one that you would have got with respect to theta that also is 0. Hence, you are left with here. Now, you have for V r okay, a, a term here 3 by 4 r and derivative of that all that I put and I get minus 9 by 16 r cube. There is a typographical error which is should be r cube. Okay. So, that gives you the acceleration in the radial direction. Okay. Now, here at this point you have been asked to find what the acceleration is. So, you need to know the radial distance x y is given, find out 2.5, therefore okay, find out v r, what is the velocity it has been asked for. Also, you have been asked for to find the acceleration. So, once you have these expressions, it is a mere substitution of these coordinate systems. And the last bit of this exercise was to find out the pressure gradient. Okay. So, it is similar to what you have been doing, but now you have to write the pressure gradient. P by rho plus V square by 2 is a constant, that is what is Bernoulli's principle. So, I want pressure gradient means what? Derivative of pressure with respect to R. What happens to the derivative of pressure with respect to theta pressure at any point? It is actually symmetric. Okay? So, derivative with respect to theta is 0. So, d p by d r equal to from here, since you have an expression for velocity in terms of r 9 by 16 r square, same thing you are substituting and r cube if you substitute finally, you get 2.28.8 newtons per meter square. Be careful about the units. Some of you are avoiding writing units in your answers. See pressure, whether it is delta p or p, the dimensions will be so many newtons per meter square. Pressure gradient means you are dividing by a length, divide by length, that is why per meter. So, if you go keep that in mind, you will not get confused with writing the units. So, dp by dr equal to so many newtons per meter square per meter will be the answer. Okay. So, today although we have little more time, I think I will stop here and then try to discuss something else with you.